Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another MAT 142 concept session. Today, we're going to be talking about normal distribution and empirical rule. My name is Nick, and I'm with the ASU Tutoring Center, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, with the normal distribution, it makes up a bell curve, right? So when we have a data set and it's considered normal, right, the, all of the data points graphed on a frequency chart will create a uh, normal distribution, right? A bell-shaped curve, it comes up and then it comes back down. Now, you, this will probably be the most common distribution that you see. Um, just generally, I mean, even professors use it for like exam tests and just like overall grades, right? Like the general rule of thumb is that like most things should follow a normal distribution, right? Um, now, what the empirical rule is, is the empirical rule kind of splits up the bell curve, right? So with our uh, bell-shaped curve, and let me draw it a little bit larger so I can write actually underneath it. Cool. So we have the center point here, right, which is our mean, right? And they'll always give that to you. From there, um, what we have is standard deviations, right? So, and those of you, you should be familiar with the standard deviation, right? So that is uh, one, un like one length away from the mean, right? Once you, you, uh, you can set, you call it like a basically distance away from the mean, right? So we have one standard deviation away from the mean, right? And we'll signify this with our standard deviation symbol. That's one standard deviation, right? And then we have, um, for all intents and purposes, we'll call it three. We'll just go to three, but you technically can go for an infinite amount. So we have two sigma, three sigma, and then we have two and three. Now, the way the bell curve breaks down and how we decide what these values are is based off of the empirical rule. So we have the empirical rule basically states and adds percentages to each of these. So they're saying that the, what the empirical rule says is that from one standard deviation to the mean, that should make up 34% of the data. Okay. And that's the same for the other side as well. So in total, it makes up 68, right? Between the one negative standard deviation one less than the mean and then one greater than the mean makes up 64%. So that's over half of your data points, right? That close to the mean. And then from there, we have 13.5. And then lastly, we have 2.35. So and you can enter this into your calculator. And there are also formulas as well as to how to find the standard deviation of your data. Um, but hopefully this is just kind of a good primer on what the normal distribution is and the empirical rule. Most of the questions that you'll see is you'll be given a mean and a standard deviation. And from there, what you usually have to find is the area under the curve. And we'll talk about that in our next concept review. But just to kind of act as like a small little primer, um, what they'll say is like, it, and it can even, because if you think about these uh, one sigmas are actually numbers. So think of these more as like a variable, right? Like X. And when we're told, so say we have, so say we're told that we have a normal distribution with a mean equaling 10 and a standard deviation equaling one. Our bell curve, will look like this. So our mean is our center line, right? So that equals 10. And then we have, we'll put in three standard deviations. So there's one, there's two, there's three. One, two, three. And since our sigma is one, I'm going to add one to the mean when I wanna to go to the right. So this first uh, standard deviation line here is going to be 11 and then 12 and then 13. And then going down, we'll subtract one. So then we have nine, eight, seven. So these are, the, so like for here, like one sigma here is the equivalent to nine. 
because we know that our standard deviation is one. So just kind of keep that in mind whenever you see um, that sigma. But most of the time, what they'll ask for is they'll ask for what is the area under the curve at 11.5 and back. So they'll ask what is the area under this curve going all the way up to 11.5. And then from there, you have to do a Z table and we'll go all over all of that in the next concept session. But if you have any questions on just like the general topic of the normal distribution, go ahead and click on that link on your screen. It'll direct you to our website that lists out all of the tutoring services that are free for being an ASU student. Or if you are looking for just general tutoring, you can type in a course and the system will spit out a bunch of different tutors, um, hopefully that will be able to tutor that course that you put in and then you can plan your schedule around that. But other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and best of luck in your course.